Hi everyone, my name is Dries Valle from Kappa Data, and in this video I will show you some examples of the Ruku Smart Zone API. Before we start, let's take the API documentation. We can just Google for Ruku's VSET API, and then just pick the version uh, of your controller. In our case, it's uh, Smart Zone 5.1. We can just continue to the API page. Here we go. So the first thing you need to do is log in to the API. We're going to do this with a service ticket. They used to work with a session, but that's not going to be used anymore. So we'll just use the service ticket. Let's have a look. On the left side, we'll see some options. Here we have the logon as well. So let's open it. You can see the service ticket and let's go to the logon option. Here we see the post. We see the request which contains username, password, and then below we have the response which contains our service ticket. So now we can open postman and request our service ticket. So we'll do a post and enter the URL. Let's have a quick look in the documentation for the URL. It's going to be this prefix. Let's fill in the host. And then the last part we need as well. Let's go back to our service ticket and see which post we need copy and paste. Next, we'll need to fill in our login information. So we go to the body and use raw. Let's go back to the documentation. The body will need username password. So let's just copy, paste it and fill in the correct information. The user will be video test at Kappa Data. The at Kappa data is there because it's the Kappa data domain where you log on to. And then the password of that user. We use an actual user and this causes um, the API to have the same rights as you would have in the GUI. So we ca cannot do any more actions than we would in the GUI. All right, that's it. Let's click send and have a look. Here we go. We got our service ticket. We will need this for every API call we do. So now next we can go ahead and we can create a zone. To create a zone, let's go to the Ruckus wireless AP zone on the left side. And if you scroll down, you can find create zone. Here we go. So let's first copy part of the URL we need. Go back to the postman. Let's create a new request. It's going to be a post again. We need the URL. We already copied the last part. Let's put the first part there in there as well. Oh, copy too much. Here we go. So that's fine. Now we need our service ticket. It's a URL parameter and go back to the overview. We can see the common request URI parameters. So we'll need a service ticket with the value service ticket. So let's go back to the postman and let's add it. So I'm just going to do it straight away in the URL. That's going to be service ticket. Copy your service ticket we created earlier. Now we can paste it. Here we go. Now we still need to fill in our body to create a zone. Let's go back to the documentation back to the information of our create zone. If you open up the request, 
you'll see the body and if you scroll down you will find the scheme as well. If you go completely down to the end of the scheme, it's a big one, okay, you'll see required. Those are the fields that are required to be able to create the zone. In our case it's name and login. The login is the login needed um, to get access to the access point SSH. That's a requirement to create a zone and of course a zone name. So let's move back up and have a quick look in the body how exactly they pass this information along. Okay, so we have just in the body itself we have name. Let's copy this, post it in our body in the postman. It's just raw. And don't forget the brackets. Here we go. Let's close them already. Okay, so we got name. Let's give it a name. That's going to be the test API zone. And then we still need the credentials. So let's go back. And here we have login. Let's copy this as well. Paste it in our body. Let's fill in AP login name, let's leave it admin and then the password for the AP SSH. Let's make it my original password exclamation mark. All right, so let's see what happens if we click the send button now. Oh, looks like it's not right. We still need a number. So we have capital, small letters, we have a special character, but we still need a number. So let's make it pause word with a zero and click the send button again. Here we go. Now we have a response, which is an ID. If we have a quick look again at the information on the APIs, our response will be our zone ID ID with the zone ID, so that's correct. This means we just created our zone. Now, to be sure we created our zone, let's see, let's do a get and see which zones we have in our domain. So let's go back to our Rukus Wireless AP zone and look for a get that will give us all the zones. All right, retrieve list. Use this API command to retrieve the list of Rukus Wireless AP zones that belong to a domain. That looks like the one we need. Let's copy it. Let's make a new request. It's going to be a get this time. Okay, let's copy the first part as well of the URL. And then we can copy or service ticket too. Um, pay attention, because the URL is case sensitive. If you would use service ticket with a capital S, it won't work. So let's paste it and don't forget the question mark. Here we go. That is it, I guess. Let's see what happens. Send. All right, we have a whole response. Let's see all the zones we have in Kappa data. We got Kappa data 2020, new AP Kappa data, Kappa data Chris, home. Oh, here we go. We got our test API zone. So we can see our previous created zone is there. As a last test, let's go real quick to our, let's go to our VS set and log on with our user. That's going to be video test at Kappa data with the password. Oh, I made a typo here. Here we go. The password was to test test to exclamation mark. Oh, delete all the other stuff and log in. Here we go. The 
then if we go to our access points to see our zones, let's go to Kappa Data, we can see our test API zone. So we created something, we took out the information. There's a lot more stuff you can do with the APIs. Actually, the possibilities are quite endless. You can make a whole system to automate stuff or whatever. Um, if you go through the documentation, you'll see all the possibilities. So good luck with the programming. If there are any questions on this topic, just post them below and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks for listening, everyone.